OK, so the man at the centre of a new book on a high-profile defamation case was stopped, detained and searched at Auckland Airport. Businessman Matt Blomfield was awarded damages by the Human Rights Tribunal in March after it found that whale oil blogger Cameron Slater had defamed him. He launched the book Whale Oil by Margie Thompson last night in Auckland. Mr Blomfield says despite the decision in his favour, he's out of pocket and as the search on Friday proves, the lies are still harming his reputation and his family. Alex Pirate reports. Matt Blomfield launched the book Whale Oil last night in Auckland with author Margie Thompson. The 300-page account details how blogger Cameron Slater published a series of blog posts in 2012 accusing Mr Blomfield of fraud, extortion, criminal involvement with drugs and other things. He says it's taken years to clear his name, but undoubtedly much of the mud has stuck. People should be afraid, he says, of how easily you can be targeted by an online campaign of lies. It's terrifying. I mean, I I often give examples of the sort of things that someone could do to another individual online relatively easily. And um, you can ruin uh, a year, two years, and in my extreme example, seven years of someone's life. And then um, suddenly you've got someone who's a pretty damaged individual. He says he's no conspiracy theorist, but further proof the ordeal isn't over came on Friday afternoon at Auckland Airport. On arrival from a trip to the United States, he and his wife and children were detained and searched for at least two hours. When it got slightly odd, after they had searched all our bags and I had a a copy of the manuscript of the book in there, we said, well, you haven't found anything. And I was was getting quite angry because my kids were starting to get upset. They were tired. The woman who was the custom officer said, you need to tell me what the book is and the title of the book before we let you through. And I couldn't understand why they would do that. I was was furious. Matt Blomfield says he had no choice but to give the name of the book as the customs officers demanded, breaking the strict embargo. He says he's convinced that the incident was prompted by the same people who have caused him trouble over the last seven years. They were looking for something. It did seem odd. I mean, we're a very, very normal-looking family. We, the kids were all in holiday clothes. We, we weren't like to be suspect. It seemed odd. Something was not right. Barrister and civil liberties advocate Michael Bott says it appears Mr Blomfield and his family were detained unreasonably. For someone who's a respected business person coming from overseas with their family from the United States, to be subjected to this sort of high level of intrusive uh, surveillance and questioning seems completely disproportionate. He says Customs New Zealand has some explaining to do. This does appear to have the hallmarks of a fishing expedition. And as I say, they went through everything. And so it it appears to be, at at first glance, some form of state-sanctioned harassment. The actions of the customs officers should be subjected to uh, quite forensic questioning and investigation. Customs New Zealand would not comment further than their statement published on Twitter, which says there's a number of reasons why they search travellers and can't comment on this case for privacy reasons. Customs says it's happy to talk with Mr Blomfield and give an explanation. Matt Blomfield says one of the worst moments in the struggle to clear his name was when a masked man broke into his property and fired shots at him with a gun. He was then taken into a type of protective custody, moved into a new apartment and had no choice but to homeschool his children. He says authorities and laws need to catch up with online abuse as the damage can take years to repair. Mr Blomfield says he had no financial benefit from the legal action as he knew that Cameron Slater did not have the money to pay for damages. He fought the matter on principle. There was never going to be a bag of cash. So I I went into this knowing that every filing fee, every legal bill was a black hole. There was nothing coming back. Matt Blomfield says he's now studying for a law degree but trying to keep a low profile. For Checkpoint, Alex Perrottet.